Hello all, Rick here, looking into a controversial vessel from Star Trek canon and examining some claims about it. The Inquiry class was introduced in the first series of Picard, and one of the only new vessels. Unfortunately, its introduction was marred by issues behind the scenes, however with further years of development and apocrypha fleshing it out, it's unironically become somewhat of a favourite of mine. The origin of the ship was the finale of Picard's Season 1, which had a fleet of them come to the defence of Coppelius, but the ship itself had to be hurried to completion. The initial design was one of three concepts created by John Eaves for the 2007 version of Star Trek Online, and I think the similarities with things like the Sovereign are apparent. This concept was adapted and brought to life for Picard by Studio Visual Negative, and modelled by Brian Tatosky. The request for such a vessel to appear in the finale was late, and not enough time was given to the project, leading to a confused and lacklustre introduction of the Inquiry class. In order to add some limited variety to the fleet, several versions were created with alternate nacelle designs and colourations, and this led some to claim that the fleet was in fact made from four separate vessels, but this was contradicted by later lore and, well, visual inspection and dialogue within the show. Tatoska himself was not satisfied with the designs, and would later express his desire to prevent such a hurried creation happening ever again in the legacy of Star Trek. When the vessel was introduced into Star Trek Online, a more detailed model was created by Tobias Richter in 2020, and that model was further edited for Season 3 of Picard with an adapted model introduced that refined the design. Changes included the tapering of the lower hull to remove the flat angle, the lightening of the hull colour, and most prominently the addition of a deflector dish instead of the grill that was there previously. This ultimately created a final design that has been the inquiry ever since, however the previous versions were still now on screen and needed clarification. While the shows did nothing to address this, Apocrypha bore the load and created material to fill out the lore here, but as with past designs, the real life development went into addressing the in-universe tale behind this ship. The vessel was designed originally to replace the Nebula class as an adaptable long-range exploration vessel with uh, further applications. Those further applications being the warfare and battleship roles, Starfleet is always hesitant to implement. The Nebula class, and Luna both, were designed as exploration ships, but excelled at patrol and defence duties. The Nebula, through the refits of the Dominion War, and the Luna was just a powerful and sleek ship. Therefore, on the drawing board, the Inquiry was to be an exploration ship too, but one armed to the teeth. In 2394, the USS Inquiry, NX86500, was developed and launched with that role in mind. To facilitate the variation of the Nebula class, the Inquiry would forego the interchangeable mission pod in favour of easily convertible sections of its superstructure. The front of the engineering hull could be completely converted and the nacelles were able to be replaced easily, allowing for customization for specific mission builds. This is ironic considering the fleet that debuted the Inquiry. The Inquiry field tested several new designs that would go on to become standard within a decade. The warp systems were refined to be more efficient but the slipstream drive, that had been all the rage with the Dauntless and Odyssey classes, was put aside for the time being. Instead, the warp core was focused on for maintaining higher cruise factor. Additionally, the weapon systems were expansive. In the face of the Utopia Planitia attack, 
where the culprits were still unknown in 2394, and numerous aggressive factions among the collapsed Romulan Star Empire, Kazinti and Gorn raiders were also harrying Starfleet supply lines. This combat pushed Starfleets to heavily arm their newest exploratory vessels with new systems, and I believe the Inquiry was the first ship to be equipped with Type 15 phaser arrays. The USS Inquiry was eventually registered under an NCC designation, and the line of vessels went ahead being produced in large quantities in order to bolster the fleet. Such vessels were named after famed explorers of the UFP's member planets, harkening back to its origin as an exploration craft. The Mars shipyards were still partially out of commission at this time, so the Andorian Imperial fleet yards and the Tella Consolidated fleet yards created most of these ships. In 2398, the USS Zheng Hua NCC 86505 was commissioned under the command of Captain Susan Vickers, and operated amid the former territory of the Romulan Star Empire, now collapsed for 11 years, and host to a large Federation presence of such craft. Which to the Romulans must have seemed very opportunistic. Anyway, the Zheng Hua was operating in the Z-Hydrate sector and made contact with former Star Empire subject species until the crew contracted an illness and had to return to Starbase 718 for recovery a year later. This was the vessel that was placed under the command of Captain Riker in response to the Tau Shi'ar fleet over Capalius, and it was accompanied by the first Devron Heavy Response Squadron. These ships were relatively new Inquiry classes that had yet to receive their full retrofits for the variety of mission profiles they would undertake and they were operating as a response fleet. The ships were boasted of by Riker as being the toughest, fastest, and most powerful ships ever put into service as of that year, and it was not an idle boast, considering the former Commodore O would have likely known of these vessels' capabilities. The ships ended the confrontation without a battle ensuing, which you could argue was the whole point of their heavy armaments. A deterrent. In terms of statistics, the Inquiry class was 640 metres long, 320 metres wide, and a rather flat 86 metres tall. Its hull had a coating of ablative armour like the Defiant and Prometheus classes, while it also bore a form of reverse-engineered regenerative repair derived from Starfleet-produced nanites based on Borg research. That is likely where the boast about it being tough comes from, as these nanites could effectively heal hull damage quicker than repair teams or drones. It had a crew capacity of around 350. Let's see if the boast of its speed holds up. Well, it had a highly efficient warp core that could sustain high warp factors for longer, which was rapidly becoming standard in ships being produced, being able to hold warp 7.5 without overheating definitely, and being able to reach factors of warp 9.9. .9. However, it lacked the quantum slipstream drive, so I guess it's a fast vessel for sure, but the Intrepid could hold higher warp factors for longer, and the Odyssey had a limited QSD, so this does not really hold up although the Inquiry sits at the upper echelon of its era. As for its armaments, well, it really does boast quite a formidable array. It was equipped with Type 15 phaser arrays, the newest in the fleet and still not standard by the turn of the century. Alongside this, however, it had Type 12s, designed for more accurate fire, creating coverage at all ranges two distinct phaser systems on one vessel is something only reserved for ships like the Defiant and later Kagarin classes. Additionally, the Inquiry featured a torpedo launcher and a payload of quantum torpedoes. These were actually produced on board by its own manufacturing plant to replenish its payload. So in this regard, yes, it really does seem to be Starfleet's most combat-orientated ship since the Defiant. 
It was also home to the Variable Assault Deflector Array, which actually channels phaser systems through a specialised phaser emitter over the deflector dish, channeling the resulting bleed-off energy from the blast back into its deflector shields. This is the explanation given for the unique deflector grill, and not a standard attachment for every inquiry class. Hey, it's a retcon, but it's a retcon I'll grab onto. The inquiry had a horrid introduction, but in a way, its flat and angular look, well, yeah, kind of unfinished, certainly did make it stand out. With further refinements, I think the ship has developed into a unique design that has all the markings of a battleship or interceptor-style vessel. However, much as Starfleet made the Defiant and called it an escort, the Inquiry is clearly a battleship, but called an exploratory craft. Just one that is deployed to explore hostile territory, and while not a bad idea on paper, it certainly harkens back to a Dominion War era Starfleet and reminds me of the Sovereign. With the 25th century ticking over, however, the Inquiry class would ultimately be the 24th century's most powerful ship from Starfleet, considering they certainly pivoted back towards exploration-centric vessels like the Sagan Constitution III and Sutherland. On a more pessimistic view, you could say that the Inquiry was the result of Starfleet's paranoia since the Borg, Dominion, then Zatvash attacks gave them reason to create more and more aggressively armed exploration vessels. As Starfleet moves on with its exploration initiatives, however, the Inquiry, like it or not, exists now in their lineup, and is always ready to respond to threats, seemingly en masse if it should be called for. This time with a better looking deflector array. In universe, if this vessel had entered service during the golden age of exploration, it would have been pushed back for sure. But then we saw the unapologetic Defiant class, and even the Sovereign class Enterprise was heavily armed and battle ready. Thanks for watching this breakdown on the Inquiry class. I've been Rick, and I'll see you later for another video. Thanks again, and goodbye.